Uh, yeah, so hey everyone. Um, so uh, today we will talk about such technology that is called console. Um, yeah, let me uh, notify you that um, this is very, very basic um, discussion about what is this technology, what are the main features of this technology, and like how to how to cook it. Yeah, so if you like wait for some some advancing stuff, uh, so just uh, like don't be disappointed with that. Yeah, so probably if this topic will be interesting for you, we will be able to prepare a, a set of other um, other sessions related to the console and uh, like more advanced topic. Uh, let's take a look on our. Um, agenda today. So uh, let's discuss what is actually the service mesh and which benefit it gives. After that, let's check what is the console and uh, what are like, the main features of the console. Then let's verify the architecture, mm, review the service mesh hierarchy, check which type of gateways it has, and uh, like any, and also review other other features. After that, let's review our use case that we will implement and start our implementation demo. Uh, so what actually the service mesh? Um, to be honest, uh, like um, there are a lot of different definitions of the service mesh. Um, just to explain like in very primitive way, let's imagine that you have like two services or for example, two virtual machines or two containers and those services or containers uh, like interacts with each other uh, via network. And in that case, you are like not aware who could be like in the middle and probably it's a good idea to provide some kind of uh, encryption in transit. It's a one point. Another point that when you have like a lot of services, not just two, but many services, it's very hard like to monitor what happened uh, like in the connections between the services. Yeah, for example, you can have um, a very simple query, but this query will go through like 10 microservices. And if something will be wrong, you won't be able to check like on which stage uh, it, it failed. Uh, so yeah, in that case, like the service mesh is also a solution for you. Uh, usually like the service mesh uh, is splitted for the control plan and data plan. So the control plan is some kind of uh, controllers uh, that overview your config configuration, your system configuration and in and the, and the settings and provide like, some proxy environment for your data plan. And data plan, it's actually your application. So it could be VMs, containers, and et cetera. So in case of the console that we will discuss, like it works both for the vanilla VMs and also for the Kubernetes. Which benefits like give us the service mesh approach? So it allows us to make some kind of flexible traffic management, for example, you need to provide some, to implement some kind of canary. And with the console, you can split your traffic, for example, 10 percentage of your traffic to the newer version and 90 percentage of your traffic to the old version. Yeah, uh, after that, you can also segment your network and split it for um, virtual subnets, provide the mechanisms for the redundancy. Yeah, for example, you need to implement some kind of retry mechanism. Um, to do not implement these uh, on the application side, you can use the service mesh, what actually the best recommended practice to provide the retries and timeout mechanism. And as I mentioned before, the security stuff like um, configuration of the encryption, in transit and additionally the uh, RBAC configurations. Uh, how the service mesh works? As I mentioned before, you have some kind of services 
And near that services, you have some kind of sidecar, sidecar proxies. Usually, like it's, uh, it could be, for example, Envoy proxy or um, Ha proxy, something like that. Yeah, but in most of the service mesh platform, the Envoy is used because it's a lightweight solution. So we will we will talk about this later. Yeah, and as you could see, like the service A, for example, on this picture communicate with the sidecar proxy, throw this sidecar proxy, it communicates with the service B that is also covered with the sidecar, sidecar proxy. So in that case, like there is mm, no direct communication between service A and service B. And in case of the sidecars, so the connection between the sidecars is encrypted and sometimes it's isolated. So, what actually the console is. Console is some kind of platform that provides us ability for the networking management. So it's not just the service mesh platform. It's also service discovery platform, key value storage, um, like and network provider. So we can use it in a very, very different manner. But in our case, we will use it for the, for the service mesh. Uh, Another thing, like another tool that is also used for, for that purpose, it's the Istio. But in most of the cases, Istio provides the stuff for the Kubernetes. However, the console has like uh, full, full implementation for the Kubernetes and like you can use it now. Yeah. So let's review the main architecture. So as I mentioned before, uh, like, the service mesh contains the control plan and data plan. So in case of the console, like the control plan consists of the multiple servers and there is some kind of replication between these servers. So we will take take a look on the replication mechanism later. However, just, just keep in mind, yeah, like the, the main configurations are replicated between the servers. And for example, in case of failure of any of these servers. So another one will become the leader. So as you can see here, this one is marked um, with, a, with a star. So it's a leader and the rest uh, of the instances are replicas. But if something will happen, for example, with this, uh, with this leader. So in that case, uh, like the election mechanism will be initiated and one of these two uh, servers will become the leader and like will start the replication with <clears throat> with another another server um beside the servers there are a client so clients it's like an agents that provide the connection between your worker machines and services to the to the control plan yeah so to do not um uh, access the control plan directly you can access it through the clients and actually it's how the proxy works and etc so we will take a look on, on this mechanism more detail during the implementation then but in this case also there is some kind of connection between the clients so the clients um use the local network connection um to transfer the information about the services that uh, lives on the same machine with the client yeah for example uh, let's imagine that this, this is the VM and here you have three services. So the client will let let know the another client that like, here we are, we have a uh, three different services here. So you can access it by some, some domain, name, domain name, for example. It's a one point. Another point for the console that uh, it has some kind of hierarchy. We will take a look on the hierarchy schema on the next slides. Um, but the main component of the of the console here is a data center. So data center is like a cluster. It's a one data plan and like a set set of the clients. Yeah, and uh, for example, you can have like one data center per, for example, AWS region. Yeah, and or for example, per um, per availability zone. If you use the community version so if you use enterprise version you will have like more uh, levels of abstraction to split to split like your um, your data 
but uh, in other case, for example, let's imagine that we have like another data center. For example, if it's co-located uh, in some some different place, yeah, uh, through the internet and um, isolated uh, WAN, you can like connect the different control plans and. <coughs> With these con uh, with these connections, um, it will be pro uh, provisioned some kind of replication between the control planes in the data centers. It's one point. Another point that uh, through these connections, you will be able um, to set up the connection between the services in the different uh, different data centers. Yeah, let's imagine that in the data center one you have a like database services. And in the data center too, uh, you have like um, backend services. So, and through that isolated WAN, you can set up the direct connection. Or like it's a bad example to split the database and backend, but like let it be. Um, so, uh, here is demonstrated how the service mesh works actually with a console. So, we have the control plan that contains with the servers, as I mentioned before. And on the machines of data plan, we have the console client. That that console client interacts with a proxy. And this proxy uh, like forward the connection and traffic to the application directly. So in this case, the application is like isolated. So it's uh, not uh, accessible from outside of the, for example, virtual machine. Yeah, but you still can like communicate with it inside of the inside of the service mesh network. Uh, so as I mentioned before, the main proxy component for the console is Envoy. However, you can configure um, some some different proxy servers like HA proxy. Yeah, but um, in case of Envoy, it's pretty lightweight. However, it has a very complicated configuration, but you don't need to care about, about this because the console will prepare the configuration for you. So this is the way how how you can like build your service mesh. At the same time, Istio also used Envoy. And as I remember, it doesn't have some alternative ways. So what are the main uh, hierarchy items? So you have the data center that could be split for the segments. And that segments can contain uh, different namespaces with the services. So the services belongs to some namespace. And actually service could have like uh, the multiple proxy instances. Yeah, for example, you have a service and you have like a set of the um, instances for that service. So because for example, it doesn't matter like it doesn't mean that if you use the service, it could be just like one application or something like that. It could be uh, uh, multiple replicas of the same application and it will um, cover it with a proxy and like it belongs to some service. By namespaces, you can like split uh, the connection between the services and you can additionally isolate it. However, this feature is available um, like the namespace feature and the segment feature uh, are available um, in the in the enterprise version but in the community version for example you have a segment also you have the segment um, support but uh, you have just only one segment and is a default segment so you can configure and prepare everything for the splitting of your network and your services for the segments and after that uh for example buy the enterprise license and like split for the multiple segments yeah and the data center so it contains all the information about the underlying infra like the configurations of the of the clients uh, the service catalog that contain information about the services uh, configurations for the proxies and also additionally the key value, key value storage. Okay, so we have a set of the different gateways. So like uh, beside the ability to connect the services, we also have the ability 
to expose the services um, to outside um, of your network. For example, you have the web application and you need to provide the access to that web application for your external users. So in that case, you can use some set of gateways. So in Grass Gateway, it's like classic way in the console, how you can, um, how you can expose your application or for example, connect your application to some kind of external external service. Um, as you could see on this diagram, so the ingress gateway also used the mutual TLS uh, connection to the proxies of the service and pass the traffic through, through that proxies. Um, actually the ingress gateway, it's also like the, for example, Envoy container. Yeah, so if you use the Envoy for your service mesh, so this will be just like Envoy instance that will be exposed to outside. And from outside, the traffic will go to that Envoy instance. And from that Envoy instance, it will go to like sidecar Envoys of each service. So this is how this communication works. However, um, like, uh, we are looking on the uh, ingress gateway just to understand what are the current uh, features of the console. However, um, the ingress gateway is deprecated. So uh, it's a one more reason why I mentioned it. Like, because if you just start to meet with the, with the console, you can find that, oh, we have ingress gateway. Let's use it for the exposing. But uh, this is a bad idea. So for now it's supported, but it's not in development anymore. And probably it will be removed in the, in the future version of the console. So if you like didn't start uh, to implement the ingress gateways, so just abandon it. If you already use it, just uh, think about the migration to some other stuff. And the alternative for the ingress gateway, what actually is recommended by the HashiCorp, uh, it's the API gateway. It's like improved version of the ingress gateway that um, allows to split the traffic, transform the traffic. For example, you can transform the incoming requests and for example, um, transform the responses like add the headers uh, or for example, um, clean up the cookies or something like that. Yeah, because as the proxies has the access to the TLS keys, so it, it it's able to like decrypt this data on its side and manipulate with, with the data, but just in scope of the proxy. Yeah, so here is for, like the same the same example. You don't don't care about uh, about this label like that is right Kubernetes. So it works um, similar like in the same way for the Kubernetes and the, for the VMs. So the you need to deploy the API gateway. Actually, API gateway in this case is also Envoy proxy and the client. Uh, but you expose it for some um, public ports like eighty or uh, four four three. Yeah, and the client like come to the IP address of your uh, of your gateway, and gateway wrote the traffic according to the rules. Uh, it throws it to the some some internal services. For example, it can wrote the uh, traffic by the path or by the host name. So if you are familiar with the um, uh, Kubernetes ingress resources, so it um, it looks mostly in the same way, but um, in case of console, it has um, like more features. Yeah, because you can um, provide more flexible um, routing rules. Uh, another thing that uh, you will probably use in case if you have like a multiple data centers, it's a mesh gateway. So the mesh gateway, it's um, uh, some point of connection between the data centers. Um, as we saw before on the slide with the architecture of the 
of the console, yeah, um, we had like um, one WN connection. So these WN connections comes uh, through through this mesh gateway. So to connect two different uh, data centers, aka clusters, you need to deploy the mesh gateway uh, to each uh, to each data center, and then configure it like uh, one data center will be primary and one will be the secondary and the secondary will will perform uh, replication of the replication of your primary it's so a one point another point when you will have uh, in the mesh gateway gateways you will be able to see in the service catalogs between the data centers and point for example services in the data center a to the services in the data center B. And it will go again through the proxy and then through the mesh gateways, proxy, but in another data center, and then directly to your applications. Uh, to provide the security stuff, the you probably close these windows with the webcam images. Um, to provide the security, layer so the console use the ACL like access control lists um how actually it works um and how you can access the console um there are actually a lot of different uh, authentication and authorization mechanism to the console but like the standard and easiest way um how you can access the console uh, and uh, interact with the console server, it's the tokens. So you can uh, define, like gen generate some kind of token and attach some kind of policies that allows some actions, that actions are uh, defined by, by the rules. So in the rule you have, like you define, it, it looks like, a, a, Terraform code because it's the HashiCorp configuration language. Yeah, so you have some kind of uh, item that you want to operate. Then the name or pattern of the name of that item and the policy. The policy could be like read and also it could be write. And sometimes policy could be like hello and sometimes it could be deny. So it depends on the uh, depends on the like on the items that you will configure. For example, here we have a service. So the policy read in this case defined that with the token that will have the this policy, you will be able to uh, authorize with the console uh, control plan and get the information from the service catalog about this ser service like. Mm, host name, ports, uh, additional metadata that you can provide together with the service, uh, and etc. Uh, yeah, or, or for example, this one key prefix. So this uh, allows to provide the access for the key value storage and um, like define to which. Um, which pass in the key value storage you are able uh, like to, to have access. Yeah, so in this case, for example, you will be able to uh, get all the keys that uh, are prefixed with the full, like an example. You can attach multiple policies to the token and uh, keep your token in a, in a secret because if somebody will have this token, he will be able like to destroy your infra. So very, very carefully. Okay. Um, additionally to the ACLs, uh, there is uh, intentions mechanism. So intentions is like the firewall rules uh, between, the, between the proxies. Yeah. For example, you have like one VM with a with a console client and some application and additionally proxy and through this proxy like your applications uh, connects between the instances 
but the connection um, comes uh, according to the intention rules. So if you, for example, allow the connection, so the service will be connected perfectly, but you can also deny the connection or you can configure uh, the connection according, uh, like allow the connection according to some specific rules. So we will, we will check this during the practical demo. Yeah, but this mechanism allows to additionally control to which services, um, like how the services must communicate. And uh, it allows also block some like unnecessary access to your services. <laughs> Beside the service mesh, the console provides the service discovery layer. Uh, how it works. Um, the um, console agents, like on the servers and on the clients, uh, provide the DNS endpoints. Uh, DNS endpoints return the records uh, to all the services that are registered in the um, services catalog. So you mm, like write the configuration for your service, save it to the console uh, control plan. And the control plan, like if you will ping the DNS service and will try to look up the IP address of some specific service by the DNS name, you will have success to it. And as I mentioned before, um, there is some replication mechanism between the in the console control plan instances. Um, to provide, like to enable the replication, you will be need to create some specific replication tokens and configure each server uh, server with replication token. So the replication tokens has like some specific policies that allow to. Uh, grab the data in bulks from one server to another server and actually in case of the failure uh, you will have your all your information without any kind of loses uh, one more feature is the key value so we mentioned like a key value a lot of times um, but what actually the key value storage in the console and for which purpose we can use it in the key value storage you can like save some like scalar values or uh, for example uh, json objects based on that values you can render like dynamically render the configuration for your services there is a tool that is called like it's official tool it's called console template um, and if you will start this tool on the same machine with your service and with your uh, console client, it will interact with the console client to query the key value and render some kind of configuration. Uh, the configuration could be rendered um, like it, it used the Go TPS. So it, it's similar, for example, to the Helm charts. Yeah, so you can use uh, the Golang template language to create the dynamic configuration. And also this console template, it's a daemon process. So uh, it will monitor the changes in the key value storage. And once you will change something in the key value, it will immediately re-render the configuration. So, and for example, if your application supports the hot reload of the configuration, so you can control the behavior of your application. For example, you go to the console UI, change the configuration in the change the configuration in the in the key value um, and your application like immediately will start to use it. So this also could be used for example if you want to implement the feature flagging approach. Uh, I think it, there is like uh, another way how this could be done, but as example, like it also respects to to this tool. Um, so, what will be our use case? We will have two 
uh, microservice applications. It's a dashboard service that will count the that will like demonstrate the amount of the queries to the to the backend and the count service actually this is the backend and um so it it collects uh, the count of the like access responses and just returns some kind of json and the dashboard application like visualize that that responses uh, in the web browser so how how it works you have we have the application and outside of this application we will have the proxy so we won't have like direct access to this application by its port so by default, the counting service will use 9003 and the dashboard service will use 9002. Um, yeah, so, and it will connect to another proxy uh, that is like the sidecar proxy of the dashboard service. And dashboard service will be exposed to the users. Like we can actually directly expose uh, this service to the users uh, with some firewall rules. And additionally, we can use the gateways for that stuff. So in our implementation demo, uh, we will try to implement both approaches. Yeah, so once you will come to the port of the application, it will connect like the front end application. It will connect to, uh, to some specific backend. In this case, backend will be binded. So the main port of the backend will be binded to this dashboard service machine. So, and it will be accessible by the dashboard service via local host. So <clears throat> this could be done in such way, or um, you can uh, like configure the um, direct communication. So just, uh, Keep in mind that it's not one possible way. And uh, let's finish with the theoretical part and let's go to the implementation demo. Uh, so today we won't use any kind of Kubernetes and etc. And we will use the uh, vanilla machines, like vanilla VMs. Uh, but uh, like I'm slightly lazy, so I didn't prepare the machines and we definitely can configure everything with the with the docker docker containers so in, in case of uh, our demo we will work with the docker uh, containers like with vms but in case of the failure it will be easier to recreate everything and uh, to relaunch so what we will have here and actually no worries this uh, playground will be shared with you after our um, uh, after our event. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm, so let's start from the from the root. In the root, we have the Docker Compose file. So it's pretty uh, long Docker Compose file that launch the server machines and additionally it launch some clients machines where we will deploy our um, our services. So for two machines, we will deploy the services and. Uh, for another machine, um, we will like uh, for the last machine, server machine, we will deploy the um, the API gateway uh, like to check how the connectivity will go. Um, to reduce the amount of the configuration, so we use the YAML merge mechanism. So the common part of the container definition. Like moved under the template, and then we reuse this template uh, in each um, each service. So what we use here, uh, we use the um, some custom custom image that we built uh, by ourselves. Uh, why? Um, so by default, the console Docker containers. Uh, doesn't provide the installed version of the of the envoy. Uh, so to make it happens, we need like come into the container and install it manually, 
or prepare our custom uh, our custom container. So here we are. We have some Docker file. So we extend the official uh, HashiCorp console image. Um, one more thing: be careful. Uh, there is the console image um, in the official Docker Hub library, but uh, they deprecated it and. Um, for now, the official version uh, is placed in the HashiCorp organization. So just use this one. Uh, another thing that um, the console image is based on the Alpine, Alpine Linux, uh, but there is no um, fresh build of the Envoy for the Alpine Linux and you need to build, you build it by yourself, but again, I'm lazy, so I just used the UBI version of the image that is based on the RHEL um, universal by, uh, base image, yeah, and then just uh, download the uh, platformless version for the for the Red Hat uh, from the GitHub releases, and then just push it to the binary folder. So um, I will be able to access this um, executable file. So just to build the service mesh, make sure that you will you are able like to call the envoy common. Okay, let's continue. Um, so in this template, I provided the ability to put the data centers. Uh, so you can use this template to uh, build the multiple data centers. So probably it's like the subject of next session where, where we will try to deploy the multiple data sensors and data centers and try to communicate. Um, yeah, but uh, in case of our session, so we are trying to make it uh, as much shorter as possible. <laughs> So in that case, we will just take a look on the service mesh and scope of the one data center. So we start the console agent and pass the data center name. Um, additionally, we provide the health checks because um, in scope of these Docker Compose files, we have some specific order of the, um, uh, of the containers that um, must be started. So the first container that will be started here, it's the TL, setup TLS container. It's based on the original console image. So it, it doesn't need the envoy. So we can use the basic image. And here we run some uh, embedded console CLI command. So console has ability to like, it wraps the open SSL tool and allows um, to generate certificates for the servers and clients uh, to provide the encryption between the servers and clients. So in that case, we need just one time generate the, our certificate authority. And based on this certificate authority, we can generate uh, the certificate K, K pair for each server. So we have three servers. So from zero uh, till two. And in this case, it will generate three certificate for the server zero, server, server one, and server two. And we put these certificates to the uh, to some persistent volume. So after that, we will be able to reuse it. Once the setup TLS is completed, we start to... Um, yeah, so here is the dependency. And as you could see, service completed successfully. So it's a one time, uh, one runtime command. So it won't be um, like used uh, in the future. So just during the bootstrap of, uh, of our data center. So after that, we deploy the servers. So in this case, um, we have three similar servers and for each server, um, so each um, console instance uh, must have its own data directory. So in the data directory, it stores the tokens, configurations, um, and uh, some specific specific values. So the persistence of this um, 
of this data allows to like do not lose it and perform the replication between the instances. Specifically, we have the logs folder. So we, we use the one, one volume and that one volume, we collect all the logs from all of the machines. And the set of the um, set of the configurations. So the conf we have a lot of different configurations in, in this playground. Um, for the server, we have the like for the server machines. We have the server common. Actually, uh, the um, console collect all the RCL files in the config directory, merge it, and like this is the final configuration that. Uh, console daemon will use. So the server common configuration um, describe the set of the master machines um, to build some kind of uh, forum. It means like to um, complete the bootstrap of the control plan, it must um, contain some some defined amount, um, number of, of instances. And for example, here you could see bootstrap expect. So to bootstrap, it expects to have, to have uh, three instances. In the common, we define the three addresses. And as we use the Docker Compose, so uh, the machines will be uh, available by, by its host names. So the data directory, as I mentioned before, um, Configuration for the log file, so nothing, nothing specific. Um, additional stuff: the bind address and the client address. So the bind address is used for the internal communication. So as on this picture, yeah. So um, to interact with between the servers, clients, and etc., it uses the bind configuration to set up the interface. So probably this must be some kind of isolated network. So in my case, I created the bridge network where I connected all the instances and it's isolated from the outside. Uh, and the client, client address. Um, so the console works in like as a like client ser server application. And the client address, it's the, um, the host name that is uh, like where we will expose the um, um, like the console ser services and etc. Uh, additionally, for each protocol, we can define on which address it will be used. So in case uh, of if I will miss something here, yeah, so uh, the client address is a default value. So I think I just skipped some, some configurations here, but yeah, for the HTTP and HTTPS, so it allows the connection from everywhere. And for gRPC, just for from the local machines and the TLS gRPC, it used, uh, um, it's exposed to, to the whole world, but it requires uh, additionally requires the client certificate uh, authentication. So it's pretty strict. Um, the set of the ports here. Um, one important thing when you start to implement your service mesh that the gRPC ports uh, are disabled by default, and um, and void proxy uh, requires these gRPC ports to interact uh, with, the, with the console machines. And we have also the set of the sidecar uh, minimal and maximal ports. So here I um, defined uh, 512 ports. Um, so you can actually change this. So the minimal value is default, it's 21,000. Um, and the max value you can like, um, increase it according to your needs. So the peering stuff, it's for ability to access, um, like to connect to other data centers and provide the connection for the services in the different data centers. Um, the connect, connect block defines that 
we enable the service mesh. So in case if you will disable the connect uh, block here, it means that your console won't uh, support the service mesh. So it's very, very important uh, feature here. Uh, the UI, so I enabled the UI just for the demonstration. Yeah, but in most of the cases you can use the CLI and it's um, recommended to use the CLI uh, and do not expose your um, control plan uh, outside of the outside of of your network. The recourse source, like as I mentioned before, the, the console has its own DNS server, and you can configure, for example, your Docker containers. Even like in case of Docker, you can set up the DNS custom DNS servers for the for the containers and the Rooker source it's like a default um, default name servers uh, that will be used in case of like failure of the console DNS or in case if the name um, of the name cannot be resolved so it will try this one so it's like a back off so we use the um the google ip uh, name service and the last stuff here is the encryption so for the gossip encryption we need to provide some encryption key so this key it could be generated with a console key again command so it's mentioned here but i already generated it <clears throat> to do not spend the time uh, and a last option, important option, is the ACL. So we enable ACL. So by default, the ACL is disabled. Uh, so it means that everybody will who has access to your network will be able to interact with the console clients and servers without any kind of authentication and authorization. So we enable the ACLs here, and by default, we deny all the actions. Uh, so the anonymous role, uh, anonymous token for the um, for the users will be pretty limited here. And additionally, we enable the persistence of the token. So once you will set up the token for the machines, it will be saved on that machines. And even after the restart of the console, um, this token will be loaded from that storage and uh, you will be able to proceed. Uh, one more important thing that for the tokens you can use, uh, like to store the tokens, you can use the HashiCorp world. Uh, there is uh, seamless integration between the world and console. Actually, the console, it's like the hub between the different HashiCorp technologies like Nomad, Vault, um, and even they use the Terraform uh, to set up the to set up the console clusters. So if you need some kind of automation here for the VMs, you can use the Terraform. Uh, okay, let's go back. Um, so we have the uh, common configurations for the nodes, and for each server, we have some specific configuration. Uh, so we put here the bootstrap options passed to the log file. So each log file um, comes with the name of the ser server. And additionally, we passed, uh, like we set up the pass to the certificate authority and for the specific certificate key pa pair for them. Uh, for, for specific server. So for server zero, it's points to the zero, for server one, it's point to the one, um, and etc. Additionally, in the TLS block, we can configure the um, ability um, uh, to uh, control the verification of the certificates in the different, during the different protocols. For example, for gRPC, as I mentioned before, we verify the all the incoming uh, connections and check if it matches the certificate of authority. So for the internal uh, RPC, so internal RPC, it's the uh, 
connection between between the between the between the nodes. Uh, we even also enable the checking of the host names. And this last block, it uh, provides the after encryption mechanism. So the client nodes, not the service, but the client nodes that will be connected to your control plan. Uh, so the servers will automatically generate the, using the certificate authority, they will automatically generate the certificates and configure that clients with that certificates. Actually, it's a uh, good stuff of the automation. There is actually after configuration option that allows to configure the clients with with the whole possible options. But like as example, I just show you how how to provide the configuration of the after encryption. <clears throat> so let's go next. So after our servers will be um, will be configured, uh, we will start to um, set up the ACL on the on the servers. So in this case we will generate the specific bootstrap token. So um, there is a comment once you enable the ACL, so you will have like the, the access will be denied to um, like automatically, but you will have one attempt to generate some master token. So with this comment, like console ACL bootstrap, it will return the token for you uh, that will have like the root permissions and you will be able to set up the rest of the stuff in the cluster with this token. So for a demonstration, I just expose it to the to the console, but uh, don't do this in the production. Um, after that, we generate the specific token for each machine. Here we have three servers, so we generate three tokens here. And additionally, we generate three tokens for the for the client machines that we will be need. Um, for the for the future purpose. So once the server ACLs is is configured, it means that the control plane is fully configured and uh, ready for for usage. So we can start to add our clients. So after that, we have a set of the clients here, and as you could see, server uh, set up server ACL. So service completed successfully. So once this job is completed successfully we can start to deploy our clients. So the client one, it will be for the counting part of our uh, use case, applic like application from our use case. Um, so it uh, has like the server configuration, com client configuration. So it extends the server configuration with the client configuration. Uh, yeah, and with the client commons. So the client commons contain some specific configuration on the uh, for the TLS. It's one point. Another point, it allows to use the local scripts for the health check. So for each service, you will be able to configure some commons to verify the health of the service. And these uh, checks will be visible in the in the console UI. So it's like the uh, liveness probes in the Kubernetes. Uh, one important difference here, we have uh, leave on terminate. So once the um, client process will be disabled, so it will be automatically leave the control plan. In case of the server machines, you see that skip leave on interrupt. It means that even something went wrong with this machine, it will stay in the cluster and won't like release uh, the place inside of the cluster. Uh, yeah, and after configuration, so in case of the client machines, um, we will be need uh, to provide some additional steps to configure it, but I'll show you how, how this could be done. So everything uh, is in this repo. Um, okay, um, what else we have here? Uh, yeah, so for the client one, we also expose uh, the port uh, 9002. So it's a port of the um, of our uh, dashboard application. 
Um, yep. And uh, as you could see, we also provide the config files with the service definitions for the counting service and for the dashboard service. But let's back to it later. Additionally, for the dashboard and for the counting service, we build specific Docker images. For the counting, for example, uh, we get the binary of the application and uh, put it to some binary folder so we will be able to, to launch it. And additionally, we configure the default ports for that application. So the same for the dashboard. However, additionally, in the dashboard, we provide the counting service URL. So we provide the link uh, for the um, address where the counting application will be available. So as you remember from the diagram, uh, it will be binded uh, locally on the port uh, 5000 on the same machine with, uh, with a dashboard. Um, yeah, so once we will deploy um, this um, client applications, we will set up um, the last container here. It's a setup client ICL. So it will configure the, it will generate the tokens for the, For the client machines, set up set up that the tokens, uh, and after that, our client machines will be fully operational. So after that, we will be able like to deploy our ser uh, services. So deployment of the services we will perform in the manual way. Um, okay, let's deploy our infra. So it's a Docker compose up in the detach mode. So as you could see here, so the first container like setup TLS exited. Now it waits for the healthiness of the server containers. Then it waits for the server setup ACL. Then it waits for the health. Like once it exited, the client machines are launched and configured. And the final stage, it waits for the healthy of the client machines. It's setup of the ACL. Um, let's take a look in our partainer. Okay, here we are. So our server, um, the setup server ACL machine provides the, like, as you remember, it uh, prints the bootstrap token uh, to the STD out. So using this bootstrap token, we can like use the, uh, we can log in to the UI. Uh, let's take a look. So we exposed the UI service. So actually all that servers uh, has the UI, but as I don't have like a load balancer here, so I just exposed uh, the port of the UI on some random port on my local machines. 32, um, 8, 28. Uh, so let's take a look. HTTPS in our case. Um, then um, local host thirty two eight two eight. Okay, let's proceed. <clears throat> and as you could see, it logins to the um, console, but you cannot see here anything because you need to log in. You need to put your um, token here. And after the login, just, okay, here we are. So we have uh, like three client machines and th three servers. On the ser uh, server machines, we have one service that is called um, console. Actually, the console is provisioned as a service um, yeah, inside of their service mesh. But uh, it's, uh, it's not inside of the service mesh. It's just like as a server services that is exposed directly without any kind of proxies. Okay, so we have these both containers for us. Um, let's take a look on the client machines here. We have we probably might have some kind of problems with RPC because we didn't configure the um, configure the automatic TLS. So let's let's do this. We have some specific script for that, that 
will uh, add the auto encrypt configuration inside of the container and will restart those containers. Uh, so let's run the scripts uh, and then enable after TLS. So we will be need these because uh, the proxies are configured with the TLS certificates. So to do not generate each certificate for each proxy, it's easier to um, provide this way, like for the auto TLS. Okay, let's check what we have here. Okay, here we are. So it's connected. Looks like we don't have any kind of errors here. Okay, perfect. Um, then uh, what we need to do, we need to set up the accounting service. We need to set up the um, dashboard service and validate if it works fine. And finally, we need like to try to configure the um, API gateway for it. Uh, okay, so the service definition are defined in the service files. And it looks like like this one. Each service in each de its, its definition must have um, some specific token. Uh, and with this token, the service will um, contact the control plan uh, to like write the information about its own state. So we, um, as you could see from the Docker Compose file, so for the client zero and client one, we merged uh, these configurations files in the console services folder. And we have a set of the comments like the after scripts. So for the counting service, we need to generate the token. So let's go to the container zero, uh, connect to it and let's uh, generate the token. So here we are. So this our first token. And we <clears throat> update the counting service with this token. Here we are. After that, we need to register the service in the service catalog of the of the of the console. So once I will perform this one, I will be able to see this service in the in the service catalog. And as you could see, it's a service with mesh proxy but we didn't run our service yet. So it shows that the uh, like checks for this service, like all of them are failed. So we need to uh, set up the application and um, connect it with proxy. But beside that, we also need to uh, set up the default uh, intention. Um, because by default everything is like um, is denied, and as you could see, we will create the intention, like fr from this configuration, that will allow the dashboard service connect to the counting service. Let's let's do this, and I'll show you how it looks in the in the UI. Okay, okay. Okay, if you will go to the intentions, here we are. So we can see that source services dashboard, destination services counting, and we can actually, we can provide this intention through the UI. And additionally, we can provide it through the configuration file. Beside the allow and deny, we can create some kind of filtering and uh, apply the permissions, for example, to some specific path, uh, for some specific methods by some specific headers if needed or and so, or select like allow or deny so it's very useful mechanism that like that we can use to provide the smart way of the of the routing so in our case we do still allow okay we created the intention so it by default now it will uh, allow the connection between the dashboard and counting service. Let's start the counting service. 
So we need to start the counting service process. This. So we will start it at the background. Okay. And also we need to start the proxy for, for this service. Let's start. Okay, here we are. Now let's check what we have in the services. Okay, so the counting service works fine. Uh -huh. And we could see that all checks are passed. So the, the health check for it, the sidecar containers, and etc. So everything works fine. Now we can additionally set up our um, set up the dashboard service. So the configuration for the dashboard service looks almost in the same way. So, but we don't need the intentions. So let's check the service. Let's generate the token first. Okay, generate the token. Uh, let's copy this token and paste it to the service definition file. Mm, dashboard service. As you could see here in the sidecar configuration of the dashboard, yeah, you could see that it upstreams to the counting service and like perform the bind of of this destination to some local port, 5,000. 5, and like our dashboard uh, service can ping this port, uh, access this port with the local host. Uh, okay, now let's uh, add this service to the catalog. Here we are. Uh, and as you could see here now, it uh, doesn't pass the health checks. Let's start the dashboard service. Okay, again, in the, in the background, using counted service at local host 5000. And the last step that we will do here is to connect the envoy. Mm. Okay, let's check. Okay. So now if you will take a look on the dashboard service, we can see the topology and we can also see the intentions for this uh, dashboard service. So the dashboard service comes to the counting service. Let's open uh, actually exposed, uh -huh. exposed it to my local machine. Um, let's see it. Okay. Um, Thirty two. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Here we are. So the, these dashboards like show like direct connection, and as you could see, it writes the connected or disconnected. Um, and for example, if you will go to the to the intentions and change our intention to the deny, let's check how quickly we will have the disconnection. Okay, oops, it's disconnected. Let's turn everything back. Hello. Okay, and now it's connected. So we can control that stuff. Uh, it's a one way how we can do like bind to some some port and expose expose it to outside, but um, like it's it's not not something that probably good. Let's do the same stuff, but with the uh, with a gateway. Um, okay, uh, let's deploy our gateway. So let's go to the point two and let's check the set of the comments that we need to launch the gateway. So we need to write the gateway uh, listener, gateway routes, routes, 
and start the Envoy container for this gateway. So how this gateways looks like. So the gateway listener looks like this. So you can uh, you can actually set up the multiple listeners and use the both HTTP and HTTPS. So it, it requires some kind of port that I actually, uh, here I expose it from outside of this container. But this like will be probably our load balancer. Uh, then uh, the, the routes here. Yeah, so the routes um, matches some kind of prefix. So it's a simple example of the of the rules, but um, like everything that is started from the slash will will be redirected to the dashboard, and the um, the, the targets uh, will be the API gateway with some specific name. Actually, dashboard gateway here, as you could see, dashboard gateway. And we have the listener, so we can set up the specific, some specific listener. But if we will omit it, uh, that means that the routing rules will work for all the listeners that are defined in the gateway. So let's try to deploy this one. Okay. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first configuration is written. Let's write the routes. Okay, and um, um, <laughs> and let's start there. Let's start the gateway. Okay, so it started. And if you will go to the dashboard, we could see that it's the API gateway. Let's also add the intention to allow the access from the dashboard gateway to the dashboard. So create intention, dashboard gateway to the dashboard. Because like both of these, like dashboard and dashboard gateways, both are proxies. Um, boom, boom, boom. And I think that's all we can, we can save it. Okay. Here we are. Okay, and let's try to open it. Okay. okay, connected. Okay. Um. So, uh, what actually we also could have here? We also could have the peers here. So peers, it's the connection with the other other data center. So probably, like, if you will have request, we will prepare such stuff for the for the next session. Additionally, we have the key value storage. So let's check how, how, how this key value looks like. So we can set up some kind of path here. For example, test. Um, test and um, let's make something Okay, let's save it. And here we in this folder we can create another another key test. Ah, sorry, test. Uh, my test key. In here I can write something in a JSON, HCL, or YAML form. Let's put it in a JSON. Uh, or okay so this one and for example if i will go to some specific machine um, let's go to this one um, and we can check console numbers okay and now i can use console value get test my test um, my test key okay and here we are full bar so and for that purposes I can use as I mentioned before the console template console template tool so it 
um, it's a pretty standard like utility. You just need to create uh, the template of your um, the template of, uh, of of the file that you want to render, and it will automatically interact with the console console client on the same machine and will like get all the key values. So you can refer to the keys. Uh, let me show you. Probably not here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can use like the key and the path to this key. Like this. Additionally, you can use the console as a backend for your HashiCorp vault. So you can store all the configurations related to the vault in the in the console. And actually, this integration shows like the best performance. Tokens, uh, policies, like everything that you need, you can you can like control everything through the UI. But I suggest like the way with the with the configuration files because it in case of some failure you will be able to restore everything from the configurations files and do not uh, configure everything manually um what else what else what else uh, okay probably that's all what we got here so ready to answer on your questions so we have some kind of chat okay it's not the question yeah, thank you, Elder. Guys, so uh, we have a chance to discuss what you heard about uh, this topic today. And so maybe someone has any questions or comments, agrees or disagrees. <laughs> Let's talk. Just unmute and uh, ask or use the chat. Everything was clear, <laughs> as usual. Or unclear. 